Okay, so everybody, thank you for being here this evening, uh, Dr. Dennis Mariano. This is our transforma transformational healing seminar, and these are really, um, um, really special nights for me in the evening because it gets us the opportunity to connect, uh, answer some questions, fill in the gaps. There's chasms usually that exist between the kind of work that we do and you know you take for granted that things work so these opportunities these are opportunities we have to actually go deeper into what we do and it kind of coalesces everything together so this way you have a good foundation it's almost like giving you a briefcase of principles so that when you come here and we do different things you can go what did that mean oh okay that's what it's all about then you have you can reference things i appreciate the fact that you you know you you take for granted that these things work but i want I don't want you to be doing this out of faith, because this is not a religion. I want you to be doing this out of understanding and knowledge, okay? So let's make sure also that this thing is off, good. All right, so the seminar tonight is about muscle testing. Go ahead to the next slide there, please. Um, it's beginning muscle testing. So muscle testing is a really important. I need also my uh, pointer in, in, the, in the back there. So muscle testing is a really important tool that we have in order for us to be able to communicate with the body. So we're going to talk about that in a couple minutes in detail. Before we do that, let's share with you our practice mission. Our mission is to provide the best technology in holistic health and life care. And our catalyzing statement is to inspire people to live thriving lives so they can be a beacon of hope for others. Okay. The clinical reasoning of why we utilize muscle testing, and we'll review this towards the end, is to establish your body's priority for healing, to avoid trial and error, to prevent confusion. It's not one size fits all. For example, I'll have a family come in Right, this is very common. Let's say you all went to your traditional provider, right? You all have the same symptoms. Wouldn't it be easier to go, hey, here's the piñata, it's full of antibiotics, you ready? Everybody get yours. That would seem logical, wouldn't it? But you'll find out this evening that that's not really the way things work when it comes to life and your health. Everybody's an individual and you all have different uh, patterns of interferences and therefore you have a separate unique solution for yourself. So we're going to understand how to do that. Also help to identify whose who's needs, whose body's needs. Your body. Right. Because everybody's different, right? And we'll, we'll, we'll actually continue to um, uh, support that idea tonight that you are separate and that you are actually also um, unique. And what I find, the longer you do muscle testing, is that your body begins to trust itself. Because think about this, as soon as we're brought up to, um, you know, in, in the traditional model that, that we live in, when you have a symptom, we don't like that, right? Because it's unpleasant. So what do we do? What's the natural tendency to do with that symptom? Suppress it, right? I don't like it. So therefore, give me an example of a symptom. A headache. Oh, I don't like the headache. Let's get rid of the headache. What else? What's that? Toothache. A toothache? So I don't like the toothache. Let's get rid of the toothache. You know what? It seems logical in the beginning, right? On the surface, it's logical. But really, you'll find out this evening. What does the body really mean? What is the body doing when it has a symptom? What's it telling you? It needs help. Hmm? It needs help. Now, who here has children? Right? Okay. You don't have children? <laughs> you are children. Okay. So... When they were, okay, when they were babies, how many types of cries were there? Oh, a whole bunch. Give me some examples of how many cries. The cry of being hungry. Hungry cry. Cry of being wet. Wet cry. Cry of being bored. Bored cry. Too hot. Too hot. Thirsty. Thirsty. Oh, sleepy. Sleepy. Sleepy, of yeah. Something hurts. Something hurts. Can you see how many, now, now they all sound the same. It's a cry, right? Not now, for the mom. That exactly, because you can now do, do, differentiate once you begin to announce a new mom. You're like, wow, I don't know, right? You trial and error until you get it, correct? Mm -hmm. So, but then after a while, you begin to tune in mm -hmm. to understand what those different cries are, because now you understand the mechanism, correct? Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? If your body's crying out, 
Now let me say, let's say uh, the baby's hungry. What if you change the baby's diaper? Would it work? Nope. <laughs> it's not going to work, right? You have to match the right reason for why they're crying. If they're wet and then you talk to them nicely, would it help? <laughs> change the diaper, correct? So why then would it be, would it be then appropriate because you don't want to hear it in the traditional model to just get a lot of duct tape, yeah. right? Cry, don't want to hear it, don't understand it, too much, too much work, and then take them in the basement. <laughs> yeah. I can't do that. <laughs> you can't do that, right? I've been doing that for all of them. They seem to be well behaved. No. <laughs> now, I'm being funny, but think about that. Would, that be, would you do that to your children? No. So why then would you continue to go around suppressing your body's symptom without knowing why it's crying? Mm -hmm. Do you wonder why? Think about the relationship you would have with your kids if you kept doing that, if they survived, you know? <laughs> Do you understand? Mm -hmm. What relationship do we have with our physical bodies? We've been telling it to shut up, I don't want to hear it, shut up, I don't want to hear it, shut up, I don't want to hear it by using different types of medication, different types of l lotions and potions or nutrients, right? Our job is what? To the body, to their children. Take care of it. Listen to them, right? We need to listen, we need to... The, but you know what? It takes a lot more work, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. But what's the ROI, the return on investment in that later on, right? Mm -hmm. The relationship is now solid. Mm -hmm. Think about your body with regard to your relationship with your body. It's a relationship. It's the only one you got. Right? You can always buy a new house, you can buy a new car, you can buy things in your life. This is your vessel that you get to go with you for the rest of your life here on earth. So very important for us to understand that because the more you are in touch with the body, the more you develop confidence in it and the closer you become to that relationship with, with the body. And guess what? When it needs, you need something from it, it gives it to you as opposed to Oh, I've been suppressing it for 40, 50 years. Now you get the big C, you got cancer, and you go, hey, body, can you help me out? What does it say? It's like, who are you again? I don't want to be put down in the basement one more time. Why should I do that? And that's why it's very difficult, okay? So Dr. Goodhart was one of the people that actually discovered applied kinesiology. He was a chiropractor back in the early 60s when I was two years old. Um, he basically discovered applied kinesiology and that's a method of communicating with the body and here's how he discovered it. Um, he understood that the brain and nerve system control the body, correct? And the brain controls the different muscles and so on. So the vertebra would misalign and interfere with the body's capacity to heal. The chiropractic profession understood that so they would realign the vertebrae and then the body would heal. The pain would go away or the discomfort or the healing would happen but sometimes it didn't. So guess what he found? The vertebrae that would misalign, right, affects muscles, but what else do they affect? Nerves. So the nerves, so the muscles, so the, the vertebrae would misalign, it would affect the nerves, it would pinch the nerve, and the nerve would affect the muscle. What, what else does that nerve affect? Your Control. Your organs. Your organs, right. So guess what he found? The organs that were sick, would feed the nerve to back to the nerve, irritate the nerve, and misalign your spine. So now the misalignment becomes the effect, not the cause. Hmm. And, and if you look at science, the way that works is basically what's called the somatovisceral reflex. The somato is the body, right, the, the spine there, and then the viscera is the organs. You can also have a viscerosomatic reflex. Now what do you do? You had to figure out a way so you're not chasing the darn thing around what's causing what. Isn't that intelligent? It's pretty interesting, right? That's how we discovered it. And now it's expanded to the point where you can really have really deep communication with the way the body works. And so therefore, you, that you take the guesswork away. Okay? There's a few other uh, ref um, references if you wanted to really... Uh, those of us that are very analytical and want proof, we want scientific proof that this muscle test works, right? Knock yourself out. So, <laughs> this guy had nothing better to do but go to med school, so MD, PhD here. He just passed away, Wow, April, God, it's interesting how that, about three years ago. Um, Dr. David Hawkins, he wrote three books, Power Versus Force, Eye of the Eye and the Eye. He researched muscle testing for over 20 years before I even realized that there was an. Dr. Klinghart, um, 
MD, PhD. He's a German doctor. He still goes around the United States and, and uh, Europe teaching muscle testing, really deep stuff and taking care of people with all kinds of diseases and syndromes by getting the body to talk to you and then giving it the answers that it needs. Dr. Monty is actually right here in our band. I think that changed already. They changed that name. I think it got bought out by another hospital. But um, this is in our backyard, Jefferson Hospital. So Dr. Monty is one of our co-teachers for a neuroemotional technique. And he was able, they were able to, back in 1999, validate um, the muscle tests and how it's actually scientifically valid. As if we need to. That would be like saying air is scientifically valid. All right, then if you don't believe in it, don't breathe. So um, energy medicine, the scientific basis, the field by Lynn McTaggart, Hands of Light, Barbara Brennan, very interesting lady. She used to be a NASA scientist and she used to study atmospheres, how much more left brain can you be? And all of a sudden she started seeing colors in, around people. It's like, okay, that's not right. So obviously it was an ophthalmologist visit that what didn't pan out too well. She began to develop senses, of, to be, she became a medical intuitive. She started seeing auras around people. And the more she, and there's a book in there, it's called The Hands of Light. You actually have an aura that expands around you up to nine feet. Do you ever sit in a bus, like in a train in Philly? and you sit next to somebody, you're either like, I'm okay with it, or don't want to sit here, mm -hmm. unconsciously. You don't even know, you're not judging that person, you're just like, eh, right? What did they say back in the 70s, right? The vibes, hey, I'm feeling the vibes, I'm not feeling right. <laughs> That's really what it is. We start look looking at these metaphors in terms of how things really, how we feel things to our different senses. Because how many senses are there? Five, right? The, the basic ones are five, but there are other senses too that are on the unconscious level, right? So your body's always sensing different things through different, but you don't always pay attention to it, okay? And that's been proven in quantum physics. Okay, next now. So resonance is really what it's all about. Um, for example, if you have remote control, right? You go outside, you have a remote control to your car. So you go out, you turn the remote control on, the, what happens to your doors? Or you could also turn what, the lights on. You can also, if like he's giving you a hassle, you can turn on the alarm, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> to drive him, make him run away. <laughs> What's going on? You're not touching the physical, right? You're not touching the car. Why, why is it going off? Because it's a resonance match. You get it? You caught, well, before we had the remote control, didn't you, used to be, didn't you used to be the little guy to turn the channel? Hey, Bob, go turn the channel. You had three of them, remember that, in black and white? <laughs> with, the, with the rabbit ears. And you had to stand there and go, oh, don't move. Okay, we're good. <laughs> remember that? So, and think about that, too. Think about radio waves. There's two types of, well, besides Sirius now, but radio waves, before we had all the fancy gadgets, what type of frequencies are there? AM and FM, what does AM and FM mean? So there's frequency modulation, right, and amplitude modulation. That's what AM and FM mean. The amplitude and the frequency, that's how you can tell the difference. So you're listening to, so is there a guy in your car talking, right? There's nobody there. You're taking frequencies and changing them into sound waves. Do you understand that? We, build, we take that for granted. Like if you took out your phone right now, and you looked at the Wi-Fi, how many would you find, right? Do you see it? Just because you don't see it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. How about a soprano? Did you ever see that with, I don't know, guys, uh, girls have seen that before, where a soprano will sing? Mm. You could Google it, right? And then what happens to the glass? She the glass. Wait, what's the mechanism behind that? How did she shatter the glass with singing? Do you have an idea? What's that? The sound waves. The sound waves have to match the bonds that hold the glass together. Mm. You match that frequency, the frequency, the, the, the sound waves match the, 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 bond, uh, the bonds that hold the glass together, it shatters. Do you understand what I'm saying here? So there are things that you see. Yeah, if you don't know what that means, guys, Google it. So, um, <laughs> mm. <laughs> and here's another thing that's resonance here. Um, Ring around the road, can you see? A full of ashes. What's going on? Can you see? I'm touching it. Ring a, ring a, 
Here, stand up. What's your first name again? I forgot. Ari. Ari. Come on, Ari. Hurry. He touched that right there. Give me your hand. Come over here. I think we need to be on this side here. Can you see that? All right, everybody stand up. Hold hands. Oh, it's the frequency. Yeah, come on. Stand up. Everybody hold hands. Nobody's falling asleep. There you go. Here. All right. All right. Let's pray. No, wait. No. Let's, 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 all right. So you guys disconnect. Touch. Somebody else. <laughs> wait. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Wait. I can wrap. I can wrap on her nose. <laughs> That's Isn't that crazy? Yeah, do we need any more evidence that your body is electrical, that it has other means of communication rather than your five senses? Make sense? So, yeah, without this Kmart doll, people wouldn't understand that. Even Kmart knows about that, right? So, now that we've established that there are things, there are other ways that the body can communicate, um, this is a... a um, does anybody know uh, Dr. Uh, Masaru Emoto's work? Yeah? He's a Japanese scientist, and here's what he found. Your body is made out of how many percent water? 75 What's that? 75 yeah, yeah, between 70 to 80, right? So he took water samples, and he put words on it, and froze it, and he looked under the microscope and see what the flake, the crystals look like in the water. This is what it looks like when you say thank you. Words are resonances and frequencies. You understand that? Mm -hmm. When you say you fool, that's what it looks like. Keep going. What's that say? You make me sick. That's what the water looks like. The crystals form. Your body is 70% water, right? The moon, the tides change, right? According to the moon's pulse. Depending on, do you understand that? Your body's 70% water, so it can be influenced by that. That's why the ERs and the mental hospitals get more filled when there's a full moon. Because those of us that are, that's why they call them what? In the olden days, when you're not right in the head. Luna. Oh, Luna. That's how they, that came up with. Yeah. Because when the moon would change, everything gets influenced. And we, you know, we're so, we're so time limited in terms of how we, we look at things. We're missing out on like 90% of the world, right? So go ahead. Amazing Grace. If you play music, Amazing Grace, that's what it looks like. Go ahead. Love and Gratitude. Isn't that amazing? That, that, this is just like the water crystals that are just like normal water crystals and you freeze them. Music. Beethoven. Mozart. Looks like a mushroom. Go ahead. Autumn, with all these four seasons. Winter, this is the musical. Heavy metal, look. Popular Japanese music, keep going. Bach. Well, I like that one, the Swan Lake, isn't that nice? Four seasons. Summer, keep going. Spring water in Japan, that's um, melted into the spring. And then France, Lourdes, France, there's a lot of people that might pilgrim, pilgrimage towards there, um, that hold pilgrimages to, um, this is what it looks like. Okay? So this is the water, bef this is a water in some place there, it was like um, a, a bog in Japan somewhere, and they prayed for it, and this is what it turned after they prayed for the water. Everything has resonance. Do you understand? Thoughts are things. How many times have you gone, Oh, I wonder how Janine's doing. I haven't talked to her in a while. Oh, look, it's Janine. She's calling me. Right? It's a frequency match. It's really what it is. And what they found, too, in quantum physics, electrons are paired, okay? And they have opposite spins. We are all connected on some level, even though it doesn't seem like we are. If you look at quantum physics, it's really going to show you how connected we are. So... They took these electrons, and I don't know how they did it, but they separated them far, far away from each other in cages, Faraday cages, where there's nothing can penetrate, no electromagnetic frequencies, nothing can penetrate it, right? And they then changed the spin of one electron. Guess what this one did? Changed its spin. Okay? 
I need you guys to understand how powerful we are in terms of resonances. If you look at the smallest particle in your body, what is it? You have the atoms, you have the electrons, right? Protons, neutrons, electrons keep going. They've found it out that you, it can go down to quarks. There are different quarks, but you're actually made out of 99.99% empty space. You're basically fields of all possibilities. If you can look all the way down, but it seems like you're solid because the frequencies match. Can you see this? And all our perceptions are the same way. We all perceive each other without each other. Here's another thing. The accelerated atoms in the in Fermilab, 250,000 miles per second or something, they expanded it, exploded it, and here's what they found. It would only register when somebody was paying attention. When nobody's paying attention, nothing would register when they collided the atom. So we're basically co-creator of our reality. Does that make sense? So I know we're getting really deep here, so we're going to go uh, practical in a couple of minutes here. Okay? Go ahead. So the most important thing you need to understand here is that muscle testing can access your autonomic nervous system, which is really your biocomputer. Here's your, here's your hard drive here, network, and here's your organs or peripherals. Okay? We have uh, what's called the home run formula. Go ahead, all the way around. There's four, six different principles that we need to be looking into and what we can test. The structural component, the biochemical component, electromagnetic frequencies, toxic overload, allergies, infections, emotional stress. All of these things, look at these as buckets. If they're full, you get sick. If they're empty, you're healthy. Our job in life, because what does life do, right? Does it detoxify you or does it toxify you? Does life de-stress you or does it stress you, <laughs> right? I mean, do you become more polluted with stuff or do you become less polluted with stuff? Just living life, you have to keep emptying these buckets, you understand? So this is why we do muscle testing to evaluate which of these buckets need to be emptied as time goes by, okay? So, what does this mean? What does that chart mean? Anybody explain it to me? Brian? No? So, this is called the safety pin cycle. Your brain and your cells, your energy, it creates energy and communicates with what, Brian? Right? and you have communication back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. If you have 100% communication, what do you have? Right, open book test, awesome, right? <laughs> Good. So that's the way you're supposed to do, you 100% connection, you have 100%, right? So now what happens when your spine mis misaligns, <clears throat> gotta change that font, remind me Elaine, okay. <laughs> Can't, nobody can see that right now, it should be yellow. So <clears throat> the impulses that travel from your brain down to your spinal cord to every part of the body affects different organs. This is Dr. Henry Windsor. He actually was in the University of Pennsylvania. Um, he studied back in 1921. How, how long ago was that? Maybe 15, 20 years ago? I had a patient that actually knew Dr. Windsor because he lived in Haverford. Um, oh, yes, I knew Henry. He's like, oh, you knew Henry? He was 80 years old at that time. I'm sure he's no longer around. Um, my patient, I mean. But anyway, so he, here's what, he was a pathologist. What do pathologists do? Study the disease. Study disease. disease, right? And so he studied people that have died of different causes. He would take the organ, trace the organ to the nerve, to the spine, and here's what he found. How many cases here? And, and 131 out of 100, 129 out of how many cases? 131. Okay, whatever that person died of, that person had either a small scoliosis in the spine or curvature or the amount of a lot of arthritis in that part of the spine. The equation is you damage the spine, you damage the nerves, you damage the organs, you damage your health. A damaged spine will eventually lead to damaged health. I mean, you can't, you can't just, it's just the way it goes. It's the equation, right? Okay. See, because when you, the brain, yeah, the brain cells and energy, when you misalign them, you interrupt it, what happens to the function, Brian? Decreases. Yeah, exactly. Good answer. How do you know these things? <laughs> 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 it 
And then the, what happens to these guys? What are these again, Brian? And do they start functioning better or worse? worse. Right. But are you going to feel it right away? No. Right. When you first have a tooth, toothache, did that happen that day? Did the, 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 tooth, the hole in your tooth, the cavity happen that day when you had the toothache? How long ago before that, maybe? Weeks, Weeks months, yeah. right? You just don't know. Because by the time you have a symptom, it's too late many times, right? Okay. So also, what we can do, we can actually scan your body, the different meridians in the body. You know anything about meridians? Yeah, yeah a little bit. He's an acupuncturist, I'm kidding. So, <laughs> so what we could do, because as you know, those meridians have energy, chi running through them. So when you interfere with those things, so there's a way you can actually muscle test and evaluate those too. So I'll be teaching you that, so if you want to learn more, okay? And you can access that information, okay? Um, there's another chart that we use to, for muscle testing. It's called NET, or neuroemotional technique. Organs in your body, like the gallbladder, the liver, um, have emotions associated like resentment, anger, emotionally repressed, depressed, indecisive, irrationality, frustration, aggression. Can you see that? And the, the vertebrae are T4 for the gallbladder. The liver is T1, T2, T5, T8. This is familiar to you, right, Ari? Like it's all connected in Chinese medicine. And then areas, this is how I learned this, by the way. What does it say here? Recurrent subluxations, right? That means you get subluxations keep coming back again and again, and they never hold even if you adjust them. And what I've found is that, for example, the low back, the hips, the knees, shoulders, ribs, the middle part of your back here, if that keeps coming out and getting misaligned, that could be because your lung or large intestine meridian aren't functioning properly. And there could be emotions in the body that could be stuck, like dogmatic positioning, grief, crying, defensiveness, sadness, yearning, cloudy thinking, anguish. All these emotions can affect your organs. And how many times have you seen that? Oh, you know, they died from stress or everything that everybody always talks about, it's caused by stress, right? Well, it's not enough to say that. It affects everybody differently. The thing is you can't dissipate the stress through your body. That's how you get sick. If you dissipate the stress, not a big deal. Right? So this is another thing that we have a whole seminar on NET that you can come and attend to, eva to uh, understand that better. All right, so it's workshop time. Here's what we're going to do. So, Francesca, let me borrow you here. Sorry to wake up you from your nap there. So, okay. So come up here. So the person being tested, now face me here, this way. Shall we dance? Okay, here. So hold this now, make a fist. The person being tested is going to hold the muscle here and the hand here and you're going to hold the other arm here and you're going to tell that person resist give them a couple of seconds okay resist and then okay resist is your shoulder something going on okay push, yeah, push against me yeah, she can't do it what's going on hold no, I have an issue there. okay yeah. hold okay that's better something wrong with that shoulder so make sure you find the shoulder that's working okay <laughs> so um, resist there you go, that, that works fine. Okay, so that's what you want to do. So everybody pair up. Uh, Lane, you can pair up with her. And then you pair up with your dad. And then you pair up with her. And then you pair up with me. So move that slide to the next. Um, feel free to move that camera around, Kathy, if you so you can. Can you see that in terms of? All right, so here we go, Ari. So what you're going to do, you're going to um, okay, let me let me help these guys out first. So you're gonna do that, and then you're gonna have her hold her arm up, like that, right. and make a fist, right? Mm -hmm. And then you're gonna hold like this, and then you're gonna tell her resist, yeah, resist. and then push down a little bit. Can you see that resistance there? Mm -hmm. That's what you want to do. Do that five times and then switch. Okay, you got that? You used to this. Go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hold that hand. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Oh, you wanted. Yeah, okay. exactly. Right. Okay, tell them to resist first before you push down on it. Okay, do that about five times in a row. Okay. All right, Ari, so... Yeah, so you hold here. Right there. So resist. That's it, right there. So just about two seconds and then let it go. Go ahead. Resist. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. As long as it grabs, it's fine. Yeah. But so what'll happen is that when it goes totally weak. Did you switch? Did you try this either? Okay. Good. All right. Um, forward that slide for me, Brian. Let's see. 
Okay. So now watch this. Um, let's see. You do this. Come over here, young lady. So watch this, right? Okay, hold here. Make a fist. Hold strong. Resist. Good. Now watch. Say, I'm wearing a green, what is this, sweatshirt? Indeed. Say, I'm wearing a green sweatshirt. I'm wearing a green sweatshirt. See how strong that is? Come close this way because the camera. Are you moving that calf accordingly? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm wearing a green sweatshirt. I'm wearing a green sweatshirt. Good. I'm wearing a purple sweatshirt. I'm wearing a purple sweatshirt. Hold. See what happened again? So again, I'm wearing a purple sweatshirt. I'm wearing a purple sweatshirt. See how you can't do that at all? So again, I'm wearing a green sweatshirt. I'm wearing a green sweatshirt. See how strong that is? Switch arms. Just double check. Ready? I'm wearing a green sweatshirt. I'm wearing a green sweatshirt. I'm wearing a purple sweatshirt. I'm wearing a purple sweatshirt. <laughs> so remember the resonance? Remember the resonance? Mm -hmm. Remember thinking about things? Remember the water? Mm -hmm. Remember the frequency? Remember the, 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 um, the crystals? Mm -hmm. Your body's 70% water, so your intention magnifi magnifies all throughout your cells in the body. Okay? Test. Well, work with each other. and Go ahead and do that. You liking it so far? <laughs> oh, I have no idea. No, no, no. no God. So, so that, did, hook up. Same thing. We yeah. Just, you just did with her? Did that with her and then have her do the okay. same thing. Okay. okay. Hold, hold me here. Good. So I'm wearing a black jacket. Okay. I'm wearing a black jacket. Okay, good. Oh, Keep going I'm again. I'm wearing a. Okay, hold on. I'm wearing a black jacket. Okay. I'm wearing a purple jacket. <laughs> I'm wearing a purple jacket. <laughs> you just can't do it at all. <laughs> you see how there's no resistance at all? Try again. Try again. Say, I'm wearing, I'm wearing a purple jacket. <laughs> I'm wearing a black jacket. I'm wearing a black jacket. I'm wearing a purple jacket. <laughs> <laughs> Watch again. Hold strong. Make a fist. Right. Hold. So come come over here. So um, I'm wearing. What is this? It's like a gray. Okay. All right. So I'm wearing a gray um, jacket. I'm wearing a gray jacket. <laughs> again. I'm wearing a gray jacket. I'm wearing a pink jacket. <laughs> <laughs> There's something about lying that doesn't work. I'm wearing a pink Hold. jacket. See how you can't even see how you have resist no resistance at all. I was never good at lying. <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing a pink. I'm wearing a pink jacket. I'm wearing a pink jacket. <laughs> Hold really strong. Try to over. Okay. I'm wearing a pink jacket. Yeah. I'm wearing a, a gray jacket. I'm wearing a gray jacket. Cool. Got it. Switch it, Brian, to the next one there. So does this work 100 percent of the time? If it depends on your um, training, it depends on your training. So switch that, Brian, for me for a second. Uh, switch it for me. Okay. Got it. Okay. Now here's the thing. Think of someone something wonderful that you want to happen or something that just happened in your life and then test each other. Okay. Okay, wait, you switch with your mom. So you come over here now. Okay, you guys, you are over there. I'm over there? With him. Yeah, okay. So think, think of something um, wonderful in your life or something that you really like in your life that like, makes you really happy. Okay. You got it? Mm-hmm. Hold. See how strong it is? It's like immo immovable. Mm -hmm. Think of something that's potentially upsetting just for a short while. You got it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Try again. Think, keep thinking of it. See how nothing there? Yeah. Come back to present time. Just think of nothing. Hold. <laughs> okay. So hold, hold me here. Okay, hold that. Hold, put your hand there. Put your hand, good. Okay, I'm gonna think of, I'm gonna think of something uh, really happy. Hold on, hold on. Okay. Okay, now I'm gonna think of something. Let's say my car got crashed. <laughs> See how you just no resistance at all? Yeah. Isn't that nice? So now... <laughs> it's like a lie detector. <laughs> Is it blowing your mind? Yeah. <laughs> 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 
So, so here's the thing, Patty. You thought I had some special powers, right? It's like everybody can do this. I can't sleep. I can tell when they're lying. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, kids. Sorry. <laughs> your life as you knew, your your life as you knew it is over. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to be truthful. Okay, so what's the next slide now? Okay. Yeah, yeah. somebody you're fond of. You could do the same thing. Go ahead, move forward now. Of somebody you're having a challenge with. All right, all right, everybody sit back down. <laughs> so what everybody think of that, huh? That was awesome. Remarkable. Very interesting. On the one hand, it's amazing. On the one hand, we've been missing out. Right? Like you didn't know you had that extra button in your car that would make you go 200 miles an hour. <laughs> and you've been, or you didn't know that you had like a fourth gear and you've been going in third gear. I remember when my ex-girlfriends a long time ago, she had this Plymouth Horizon. And I feel like I needed another gear. It would be like, we'd be on the highway. Like, <laughs> I was like, you need another gear, but there's no more. She had a standard and the windows would go sideways. But anyway, that was like, <laughs> go back. <laughs> She kept that thing for a long time. Well, that's kind of the same way when you don't use the potential that you have with your, with your body, right? Because you don't even know it, and it's right there in front of your face. It's such a use. So problem solving. So here's the thing. Uh, it's called the spindle test. Come here, young lady. Over there. So turn around. So watch this, right? So you can go like this. Hold this arm. If you want to practice just to get an idea, because sometimes like the thinking that's a little bit more advanced. Wait, go on this side here. Okay. <laughs> Hold strong. Good. You can do this. You can just squeeze the muscle, right? Hold. No, that's not working. <laughs> hmm. All right, she's too freaked out. Go sit down for a second. <laughs> hey, Brian, come up here. <laughs> Your body's not it's locked up on me, so turn around this way. Hold this now and resist. Good. See what happens? <laughs> so you, you can, <laughs> yeah, so hold strong. See, watch. You just squeeze the muscle. It just goes weak. <laughs> and, then, and then you s spread it apart and hold really strong, right? And then you squeeze it. <laughs> All right, go into the next slide then. You might as well stay up here. Okay, no, you're fine. So O-ring test. Okay, go sit down. So you can do this to yourself. Go here, put your fingers inside there and try to separate it. Pick, try to separate the fingers. So pick, say, say um, no is strong, and yes is weak. No is strong, yes is weak. No is strong, yes is weak. Practice, 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 right? Mm -hmm. you have, I think you have no is weak, yes is strong. Is you could do either one, either one. Just make sure you decide what's what. Oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? So you decide which one's going to be. Okay. All right, next one. Oh, another one is you could use somebody else's fingers. Um, here, come here, Ari. So go like this, right? So make a circle with it, like this. Good. So just let these guys go. Just go like this. Yeah, there you go. Hey, okay. No, sorry. So, it's like, so, so I'm going to pull this apart. <laughs> I'm going to pull it apart. Say I'm wearing a gray jacket. I'm wearing a gray jacket. Yeah, no way. Okay. I'm wearing a pink jacket. <laughs> Hold. Okay, that's a little bit strong, so you can go here. Actually, go here. That one, too. Especially guys. Guys hate being weak. It's, it's just not a good thing. So, so I'm wearing a gray jacket. I'm wearing a gray jacket. I'm wearing a pink jacket. I'm wearing a pink jacket. Yeah, there it is. So, that makes sense? So, here's another way you could do it. All you're doing is getting feedback. It's biofeedback, really, from your own body, right? So go here, pretend this is an arm, and that you're pushing down on that arm. Very simple, right? Right. You're wearing a gray jacket, you're wearing a pink jacket. You're wearing a gray jacket, you're wearing a pink jacket. I like the way you're doing that, Bob. See how he's closing his eyes? You want to shut down the rest of your 
Um, um, just don't do it when you're driving. So um, you want to shut down the rest of your senses. <laughs> Muscle testing and driving is a crime in Pennsylvania. No, so <laughs> you'll, get, you'll get a felony charge for that. No, just kidding. <laughs> Does that make sense? So just keep practicing that way. Okay. And then the next one. Sticky fingers. Go like this. So you can say, um, you can pick one. One's yes, one's no. So one make one sticky, one smooth. One sticky, one smooth. You're going to find one what works best for you, right? I had one patient a long time ago, probably like 15 years ago, and she figured out how to do this like instantaneously when she got home. She got home and her dog was like choking on something. And like, what is it? And she found out it was like, um, uh, what do you call those Japanese beetles? <laughs> it, was, it was eating the Japanese beetles. And she was able to figure it out with her own muscle test. Okay. Um, surrogate testing. We already know how to do that, right? So, for example, remember the resonance thing? How the connection is? Remember that? So it's all, remember how we're all connected that way? So I can actually, so stand up here, Jessica. Come on here, Bob. So, okay, hold on to Bob here. So, so for, okay, disconnect first. Don't turn your back to the camera. It's rude. <laughs> hold this now. So it's not mentioning the cry for dad, but that's okay. <laughs> make make a fist. Hold strong. Good. So let's say uh, brain, heart, quality, yeast, virus. You got virus going on, be careful. Are you on Amino Plus? Uh, yes. Okay, good. Okay, so that's good. So it goes weak. So now watch, right? If I scan her, you stay there, put your arm down. It's rude. So, sorry. <laughs> she doesn't have a virus reflex, right? You hold there, turn around this way. Oh, that arm doesn't work. So oh, come right. around this way. So, all right. Turn around this way. Right. Shall we dance? Here. If I were a rich man. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Make a fist. No. So here, now watch. I scan here, goes weak. I scan her, it's fine. I scan you, because I'm scanning oh you gosh. at the end. You get it? I'm sorry that my stomach is talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's time to talk to somebody else <laughs> instead of just yourself grumbling at you. Can you see that? So hers is fine because at the end, do you ever have that where you go to a farm and people like try to hold the electric fence? Mm -hmm. The person at the end gets shocked. The person <laughs> holding the fence does not get shocked. <laughs> it's at the end because the electricity travels to the end. <laughs> Don't try it at home. <laughs> it's, it's like, okay, so it's all resonance and frequencies. You get it? Okay, have a seat. So what can you use this for? Who has a cell phone right now? Okay, good. Um, you have a good muscle test, Brian. Come on up here. <laughs> I didn't interrupt your sleep there, so turn around this way. See, so hold that right. Um, hold it. Hold it right there. Hold strong. Get it closer to your face a little bit. Put it on your head there. Further out. Further out. Closer, further out, closer. Put it in your front pocket. That's okay. So what are people doing when they put that in their, their bodies? Your ovaries are right there, your testes are right there. There's low frequencies in there that are affecting you. Do not put it next to your body. Put it like three feet away from you at night. Shut it down, you understand? Yeah, or just give it to somebody else, to some homeless guy in Philly. So, all right. Who was that? Was that, was that it? Okay. Hello? <laughs> okay. All right, relax for a second now. So, also, um, yeah, you may have a seat, Brian. Thank you. Chemicals, like household in, uh, dishwashing liquid. Um, um, what else? Laundry detergent, shampoos perfumes, hold it, muscle test it. If it goes weak, don't use it. There's something in there that you may not be consciously aware of that's not of a good match or something. This is what we do in our practice. This is why I want you to come to the seminar. Now you understand, you own this now. When I scan you, you get it? When I scan you for those nutrients, that's what we're matching for you. And not, Do you understand? 
So that's why when sometimes we'll, you'll see me um, taking care of babies and then muscle testing the mom because the frequency is traveling through the intention and then you can check what that baby's doing because the baby's not going to hold their arm up. You get it? <laughs> so, and if it did, that would freak you out really bad. So, <laughs> Toiletry, soap, deodorant, lotion, hair products, right? Uh, foods and beverages. This is a huge thing right there. Let's say you're not feeling good. Muscle test what you can and what you can't eat. Oh, I really want that bagel. Well, I'm not kind of feeling good today. <laughs> Don't eat it. <laughs> or, yeah, I can tolerate it. Does that make sense? Everything is frequency, right? Mm -hmm. If that phone blew him out, what's that? Everything has frequency because anything that exists here on Earth is made out of electrons and frequency, correct? Mm -hmm. So when you match that frequency, your body will give you a response. So when you muscle test for a supplement, why do you have us put it here, the breastbone? What meridian is that over there? There you go. Mm -hmm. Getting it close to your... It's close to your... Uh, Heart, yeah, it's right there. So everything's free. So you put it as close to you as possible, and then you can t you can test it. You can dose it also. Okay, go ahead. So again, we have a home run formula. There's six things you can muscle test. So what happens when then somebody comes in? Let's say you have somebody like your neighbor. Oh, they have all these things. They've been to different doctors. They've been to different practitioners. Nobody can find anything. The reason I don't have anything special powers really it looks it makes it look like I do I don't I just know how to communicate with your body you know what it's like that phone I just held the lane right again here if I know if she knows exactly what files are in here she'd go hey Lane show me that picture got it right so I'm if I'm over here like oh I have a, a Android this is a, an iPhone I kind of don't do you understand what I'm saying it doesn't mean this is deficient this is all the capacity that it has it's a matter of knowing how to use the tool. Make sense? We have so many things that our bodies were created to do, and you're missing out on it. And since we're missing out on it, we think we're smarter than the body, so we try to tell the body what to do. And that's why, most of the time, we make mistakes. Okay? No matter how much technology you have, it's going to be difficult to try to evaluate. So that's why whatever you're coming in for, those people that you'll be sending to our practice, um, we're going to find out what's causing that person's troubles. And guess what? You unravel it. It's like an artichoke, right? Over time, you unravel, 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 and eventually you get to the point not only being symptom-free or feeling good, but actually functioning the best you can as an individual at the highest potential that you can. Because you keep... But look at the opposite. What does the rest of the world do? Oh, I got a medication for that. Or I'll just exercise it. Or I'll just do this. I'll do that. How do you know that's what you need? That would be like guessing on the baby in the beginning. Oh, I don't know what the baby needs. It's just crying. You know what I mean? But you've got to learn how to you know, um, communicate with yourself. So again, now do you understand? So what is the number one clinical reasoning for utilizing muscle testing? Everybody read that? Establish your body's priority for Six interferences. Which one's causing what? Because you come in on Tuesday, it'll have the same. Somebody go, oh, this cold's been going on for like a month now. It's like... Well, if you'd been here a month ago, we would have found out what the heck was going on. Yeah, I've been taking this and taking that, and it's not working. So you're suppressing it. You're duct taping the baby. <laughs> Stop duct taping the baby. Right? If you were here in the beginning, you would go, okay, some one time, for example, okay, here's the example now. Let's say you, was, you guys all came here, because you're going on a trip sometime soon, right? So you come back from the trip, and you're like, I'm, I'm not wishing it on you, but let's say something happened. You're like, oh, my God, like, like you know, congestion and sneezing and... All of you have it. So I'll be scanning Bob. It'll be like, well, when I was away, I couldn't really help it. You know, I'm about to retire soon, so I got to, you know, somebody called me and I couldn't help it, and I had to take the call. And so then something led to the other. So I was all stressed out. We were away for 10 days, but the first three days, I was all freaked out. So you messed up your adrenals. So now he's not feeling good. Now, Patty is left to her own now because now she's taking care of everybody else because he's not available. He's all, she's all freaked. She's all tired. The same thing happened. She's not getting any sleep. Now she's not feeling good. Brian over here was sneaking out. That's why Patty's stressed out because Brian was eating all the cake in the fridge that was supposed to be for your birthday. <laughs> so all the sugar messed up your immune system and she's really upset, right? So she slept outside and it was cold and then she got overexposed. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when we muscle test it, we're not just going to say, hey, everybody take antibiotics. We're going to go, 
need some NET, here's some homeopathic remedy to calm the system down because the organs, the gallbladder, liver, meridian is messed up because you have anger and resentment because you can spend time with your family because the work's calling you but you had no choice. <laughs> I'm really resenting that. Here's some homeopathic remedy, detox that organ. You get it? Now Patty over there would do some NET. Oh, I'm so mad because Bob wasn't here, wasn't available. Let's, let's clear that out. No, oh, went back to when I was three years old and my mom left me because she had to go and leave somebody else. That's my gallbladder. And do you understand that? So then Brian over there would be like, all right, stay away from all the sweets. Let's give you some probiotics. You understand? Let's give you some other nutrients to clean the system. Let's give you something to clean, clean the gut. With her now, we probably have to do some neuroemotional work also because she's really upset. I'm okay with Brian eating my cake, you know? <laughs> so, do you understand? So then, if something persists, you just keep unlayering it. It's not like, oh, give me more antibiotics. Do you understand? More of something isn't necessarily better. You have to uh, identify, go back to the baby idea. You know, it's not like every four o'clock they need to be changed. Something could happen the next day because there's some many random events in our life, okay? So avoid trial and errors. So you're not guessing. And you prevent confusion because it's not one size fits all, right? And you start identifying your body's need at that particular time. And then as time goes by, this is my patient, you go, you know what? I can really tell when I'm misaligned or I can tell when I'm subluxated. I can tell when something, you know, you begin to get a sense because you're so close to it of what you should be doing. And guess what? Your body then, your cells, your frequencies, are in harmony with yourself. Isn't that what everybody looks for is to have self-harmony and peace within, right? In every level of, of life, in every religion, in every psychological persuasion, in every relationship. That's what everybody looks for. But it's within. It's coming from within. So you need to be scanning what you need at any particular point in time. Okay? So that's the end of the seminar. But there are other seminars that we have here. You're more than welcome to attend all of them. We have them every Tuesday night. I have a heavy burden and obligation. You know why? This was really fun. How many people know about this? How many percent of the population knows about this crazy stuff that we do here? Maybe five percent? If that tiny bit. So it's a burden to me. You guys know I love you guys and you, I love working with you guys, especially with the kids that you brought them in. I mean, I mean, I can't hide that from you. I get all excited that they're here. Isn't that true, though? I mean, that's, I just get like giddy about it because they're going to have a better life than most people have. What about our neighbors? What about the bus driver who's on medication because he's so stressed out? You know, he's under the influence, but it's legal so he can drive. You understand? So it's a burden to me. So I'm passing that burden on to you. I'm not here to try for you to bring people in here. I need you to share with them the principles. You know, our practice does well. Um, we're not here to make more money. We're not here to try to, we're here to sh uh, share with people the principles of health that they need to know, that they don't know, but they need to know it. So I'm passing that on to you. So guess what you should do when you talk to people? Should you have them come to the practice and be patients? No, 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 not. I know that's what you think you should do. What should you do? Have them come to the seminar. Because if they understand the principles that we, we uh, espouse here, and if they understand and it matches their principles, guess what? They get an opportunity to go ahead. And if they don't like it, it's not a match. What did you just save them? They spent no money. And now they can now walk around and tell the whole world that they know of that I'm crazy, right? <laughs> but no, no, you give them an opportunity to actually meet us. So don't send people here, especially don't send people here when they've been everywhere else. It's like, oh, well, they've tried this. Like, no, go to the seminar, understand what's going on, and you get the opportunity to learn principles that may help you now or, or, or later. Okay. Then that's the reaction, is that it's your message of love to them. Also, we set out around four hours every week for proactive health screenings. Uh, a thank you gift for that new patient that comes in here. Our normal fee is $280. We, when they come here, we reward them by giving it to them for $145, and it's $135 savings in the evening. So we always try to um, have people. Does that mean they need care? No. It means they get checked. You've been through the evaluation, right? We check them. We check their posture. We check bilateral weight scales. We check the EMG scan to see if the muscles in the spine are contracting inappropriately, which is a reflection of subluxation in their spine or misalignment that's making their body unhealthy, 
right? And then if we need to, we can take x-rays to see if there's any, any degenerative changes or arthritis going on in the body. Check it. Let's say you find nothing. You can be happy. Say, so, oh, I'm good. But if there's something that needs to be done, you're aware of it, then you're not going to be surprised later on. Does that make sense? So we try to reward that. And those of you, so think about someone that you know that needs help now. And, you know, because it's so tragic, you know. I've been in practice 25 years now. You just hear all the time. I had this one person that came in, and um, she's in her 40s. She had like an 11-year-old and a 9-year-old, and she'd been everywhere. She'd done the chemo, she'd done the radiation, she had tumors coming out of her body. It was just like she goes, and she was so sad. We're doing work, and they're doing some neuroemotional work. She goes, I didn't even know I was sick. You know, and I feel so helpless, like, huh. And that's why I celebrate, you know, that you're here, you're bringing the kids. I mean, so instead of me getting so upset with that, can you imagine if it, that's all I focused on? It breaks your heart, right? So I focus on every time you guys come in, I just, you know, just jubilee going on around here. Because I just see these kids growing up. You know, who is that? Who is that? Um, Milana, right? Mm -hmm. How old is she? Like five, six or something? Five, yeah. Five. So she started to get adjusted recently and she fell off a swing and she hit her head and she had a headache. She told her mom to bring her here. Mm. Wow. Do you understand what's going on? When you transform these children's capacity to understand that healing is from within, you know, I had the same thing, a little girl who was, um, how old was she back then, like two years old or something? No, she was 15 months old. Ear infections, chronic, again and again and again. They were about to put tubes in her ears, right? They brought her here, started to get adjusted. This is probably like nine months later. So she starts to get sick, but she can't speak. She's a little kid, right? She guess what she goes? She goes, doctor? Doctor, she's pointing to her spine to come over here. It was, you can't make that up. The parents are like, what? <laughs> All right. And then they come in because she goes to daycare. You know, um, she can, so Now she gets colds. I adjust her and she's fine on her merry way. Now they're not like, oh, do we have to have ear infection? You know what I mean? So it's like it's terrible to have sick kids all the time because you can't live your own life. You know, and it's not normal to do that. So again, give you know the reason why we encourage people: don't wait, don't wait. You can wait if you want. You're going to be here anyway. But why be miserable? Enjoy your experience here. Okay. A special gift for you, practice members, before you leave here. So, um, keep going. Let's remember again that our practice mission statement is to provide the best technology in holistic and life care and our catalyzing statement to inspire people to live thriving lives so they can be a beacon of hope for others. If each of you is a bright light, you can be a light to everybody around you instead of drawing people in the darkness. Okay. Our next seminar special guest is Melinda Arcara. That's next Tuesday. And the title of it is Don't Start Eating Gluten-Free Till You Hear This. <laughs> you know how to keep a turkey in suspense? <laughs> I'll tell you next week. So, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, thank you for being here. And um, like our page in Mariano Holistic Life Center on Facebook. And those of you, um, if you want to get online. By the way, those of you that are online, since we're trying to use the technology, if you want to mention um, a seminar here, uh, you can come in for a consultation fee also, that the reduced fee also. So, go to the next one there. So I want to just close with this story. So one of my, um, my, let's say, let me, let me get this straight. My wife's cousin's son, um, 24 years old, he was having issues in, a long time ago, um, challenges when he was in his teens. And so he was finally getting his life back together and he was about to go to work. He's, um, the guy that was driving the car was 19 years old it was like about five o'clock in the morning, and so he was the passenger, and his two kids, wife, there were things, things were just getting really better in their life. What had happened is that the guy driving the truck, 19, hit a garbage truck. Well, the garbage truck's um, gas tank is in the front, so they impacted and exploded, and they burned to death. He was 24 years old. What's my point? You, tomorrow's not promised to you. You know, we're all lucky to still be here. Let's not wait. Let's not feel. The challenge in our lives is that our spirits are eternal. Your spirit's going to live forever. It came from 
forever, it's going to go into forever. That's why we feel like we're going to live forever, but we're not. Okay? Always take every moment, and I know you all do, that you're here, because you're here, <laughs> That's, you do that. Don't take every, th every day for granted, any, any moment for granted, you know? And that's why I implore everybody then to, to be in present moment and to enjoy what you have because it's a gift, right? What do they say? The past is a memory. The future is what? A dream. The now, the present, the now is the present. It's a gift. Now is a gift. It's a present. You get it? So experience that. And I want to thank everybody for being here. Let's give Lane a big hand. Thank you very much. And for Kathy for manning our camera, womaning our camera. And, and give yourself a big hand because you know what? You guys could have done something else to be here. You could have been watching TV, doing other things. And you guys are the leaders of the future. You will never be the same again. It's up to you now. <laughs> Carry on the torch. All right. Thank have a good night. Take it easy.